Hi, this is Andy and Sharon McClellan from Father's House. Welcome to this teaching session. We pray that you will be blessed and grow as a result of listening today. So if you've got your phones with you and you want to share it, share it with your friends and go for it now. Do it. And let's get the word of the Lord out today. Going to be speaking on acceleration in 2023. And so it's going to be a good, good morning. Hey, Peter Jackson, all the way from uh, Canada. I nearly said America there, Peter. That would have upset you, but <laughs> but it's good to have you see you on here this morning. So a good, good morning. It's been a great week. The weather is changing and things are beginning to look like trees are budding. And so spring is coming. And uh, as we now into February of 2023, uh, it's just a time to, to look at uh, look forward to the spring and all that the spring is going to come with and the acceleration that they're sensing the Lord's bringing on what he's wanting to do in this next season. And so uh, I just sense that, that God is up to something greater and more majestic than what we could ever imagine. I mean, he doesn't do things by half. He does them with all of his glory and with all of the kingdom power and authority that comes uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ. His vision and his plan has not changed, uh, but we just need to tune in and be in that place and that zone where we hear what the Lord is saying and lead and or be led by him in this year specifically. And so I think it's going to be an interesting year. For some, it's going to be a lot of turmoil and upset, but I think for others, there's just going to be this increasing awareness of his glory, of his power, and of his manifestations, not only in and through us, but also in the skies and in the heavenlies, things are going to be seen and made note of this year, uh, because it's all signs and wonders that direct us and point us towards the Lord Jesus Christ and his return. Amen. So I'm excited for this year. I hope you guys are as well, because this is going to be a good one. Last year, some people have been saying, well, it wasn't that good last year, uh, but last year's gone. We let that one go. Forget that one. Let's focus this year in what the Lord is wanting to do and achieve this year through us all. We're the bride of Christ, and he invited us to come walk, come journey with him as we move forward in this year. And so it's going to be a good one. I'm declaring it, and I'm decreeing it, uh, that the favor of the Lord is on this year. And though there may be things happening elsewhere that are not so good, but yet God is good all of the time. So I remember uh, part of the reason why I'm, I'm sharing this story this morning uh, and this message is because uh, I woke up last night talking about it in my sleep. And so it's not exactly on the lines of what I had planned, uh, but uh, I'm just going to go with what I'm sensing with the Holy Spirit this morning. So going back when I was a, a young lad, I was very keen on fishing. And I remember saving up with my pocket money and my money that I got from my uh, newspaper round. And I'd save up and I bought my rod, my reel and hooks, sinkers, you know, all the kit you would need. And uh, my father took me down to the rocks on the coastline and we'd be fishing and we'd be catching fish. And, and then a few years pass and, and uh, this is a story that not too many know about me, but I go down to the, what's known as the bar mouth uh, in Port Stewart, right on the coast. It's where the river Ban flows out into the sea and there's a pier on either side of the river. So I'm on the Port Stewart side of the river and I, I drive down and the, the beach in Northern Ireland, you can drive right up to the pier on this compacted hard sand. And so I drive up a mile and a half, I park the car and I park the car uh, like here so I can see the waves coming in towards the car. And from the pier, I could then judge Hey, is the water too close? I need to go. So I'm catching fish out there. I'm getting these pollock and, and glashing, and I'm, I'm reeling them in, and I'm thinking, wow, this is good. I'm excited about this. And then I look back, because I could hear in the background behind me, people like who were runners on the beach shouting, hey, hey. And uh, I thought, 
nah, they're winding up. They're just messing with me, trying to get me finish uh, fishing and come. And I'm catching fish. So I'm, that's where my focus is. And so I don't pay any attention to them. And then all of a sudden, a car comes up and he's toot, toot, toot. And you know, look around. Oh, maybe there is something going on. So I, I start making my way back again, back towards the car over the pier. And when I get there, I realize that my car has actually sunk into the sand. So it's lying belly flat on the sand. The water had been softening the sand underneath. And so although the waves wasn't getting close at that point to the car, my car had decided it's the weight of me. I'm going down. So lying flat on the sand. So here I am thinking, oh, no, uh, how are we going to get out of this one? And I start digging sand away from the, the rear wheels and the front wheels. So I get in it and I, I rock back and forward and know it's just it's just staying still. So I let some of the tire pressure out to give me a wider spread in the sand. And hopefully that will grip and pull me out of the mess that I'm in. It didn't work. I ended up having to take all the uh, the buggy and for the kids and and put it back up in the sand hill uh, out of the uh, the the area where the water would have come in. The tide's coming in, so I run down the beach uh, to the the security hut at the entrance to the beach, and they have this beautiful tractor with twin big wheels on the back, and they'll come up and they hook onto you and they pull you right out. And I thought, here we go, we'll get this sorted. No their tractor was broke. So we end up going around and actually uh, we phoned the police, we phoned the army, and none of them were able to come down to the beach uh, with a Jeep and actually get us pulled out. Uh, a local garage, uh, we tried them. They had just taken, uh, taken out their engine to replace it the day before of their Land Rover with a winch on it. Uh, but they did come around and the four guys came around this big Granada Ford and we went up the end of the, uh, the by the pier and uh, the water was already starting to crash over the top of the car. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, Sharon's going to love this story. <laughs> and so so I'm, I'm in there and I've stripped off down in, my, down in my underwear and I've gone out with a rope uh, into the water and got a rope around one of the rear wheels. And all of us are like, as the waves hit the car, we're trying to pull this car back out of the ocean. <laughs> and it didn't work. Uh, we ended up having to leave it there. And uh, a dear brother in the Lord drove his tractor nearly 15 miles uh, to meet me on the beach at 5.30 the next morning when the tide was out. And we got the car out. Long story short, we got the car all flushed out and drained of oil and whatnot and got it back on the road again successfully. So there was a success story, but I remember, you know, Phoning Sharon up, I said, Sharon, you're going to have to come down or get your father to come down and pick me up on the beach. The car is drowned. <laughs> so fishing, isn't fishing a great, great sport? Uh, but when it goes a bit south like that, yeah, it's not so good. So that is a, that's just a story leading into what I want to talk about this morning. But most people like me start off with a rod and a reel and you go down to the, the beach or you go to the river, uh, wherever you fancy fishing and what type of fish you want to catch, uh, you'll go there and you'll fish and you'll learn from others how to catch. Now, most times that happens because uh, you're actually you know, over and above the fun of it, but there's a serious side to it where you need to put food on the table. And so you want to catch a fish that's big enough that you could take home and cook and provide a meal. So that is your basic start for fishing, that you have a requirement to put food on your table. And then there's another stage about fishing where you go a little bit bigger and you've got a boat or maybe two little boats and you go out and you, you either put your nets down or, or you, you're, you do a little bit of fishing out the side of the boat uh, and you can catch more fish. But generally speaking, you're, you're at another level because you, the fish you catch will then be what you will take to the fish market at day as it's fresh to try and sell to the public so that they can have a meal on their table. Now, you take it another level up from that, and then you're going into the trawler stage where these guys will go out to the, to the ocean bed for maybe weeks at a time, and some of the bigger ones have 
canneries and everything inside of the ship so they can catch, they can gut, they can you know, mass produce and can the, the catch. So that it's ready for and go back to shore for it to, to be distributed out to the bigger retail stores who then you can go uh, to the likes of Sainsbury's and Tesco's and buy your fish for your dinner. So there's different levels of fishing. None of them are wrong but all are to do something, which is there is a need and you're being activated to go and be part of actively bringing in that need and bringing in the fish so you can provide. And so, so fishing is something that has always been around. Uh, it's been here for centuries, but the Lord loves it. And there's a story in uh, John 21, and I want to read it here to you. Uh, I love it because I think it's it's such an amazing story. And uh, we've got Carolyn on here this morning with us from Southampton. And uh, this lady, when I was sharing about this uh, a few years ago, uh, and I was sharing about how the Lord wants us to go catch some fish, and she's sitting in the first or second row of the church that I'm speaking at. And next thing I get hit on the side uh, by this pack of two kippers. And she said, there's your fish. <laughs> so I've got a photograph of me holding up this pack of fish that Carolyn had thrown up onto the platform. So amazing. But anyway, going back to John and John 21, and it's the story of the disciples. Now, Jesus has died, uh, but this involves him on the a third occasion where Jesus turns up after his death to meet with the disciples. But listen to what happens. Uh, after these things, Jesus manifested. I'm starting at verse 1, by the way, in case you're wondering what verse I'm in, in, in 21. So John 21, verse 1. Uh, Jesus uh, manifested himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and he manifested himself in this way. Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two others of his disciples were together. And Simon Peter, great Simon Peter has this great thought, said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, well, we'll come with you. They went out and got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. But when the day was now breaking, Jesus stood on the beach. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. So Jesus said to them, children, you do not have any fish, do you? They answered him, no. And he said to them, well, cast out the net on the right-hand side of the boat, and you will find a catch. So they cast, and then they were not able to haul it in because of the great number of fish. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. So when Simon and Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment and threw himself into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from the land and about a hundred yards away from getting the nets full of fish or dragging the net full of the fish. So when they got out of the boat, out onto the land, they saw a charcoal fire already laid and fish placed on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you, you have now caught and Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land, full of large fish, 153, and although there were so many, the net was not torn. Because a few a few uh, back in, look, there's a story of them catching a large fish catch, but the nets were breaking and tearing. In this story, where it happened after, uh, so the first one happened when Jesus was alive before he called them to come and be fishers of men. This one takes place after his death, and he has not got ascended yet to be with the Father, but he actually meets the disciples, his chosen ones, who uh, he had spoken to, he had led, he had called, and had appointed, and had even sent them out in the, in the 12 and out in the 72 to do great things and return with greater stories. But here they are, they've seen their, their savior, their friend, their compadre, their, their oversight, their leader gone, and he's been removed, and they're not quite sure what to do. So Peter comes up with the bright idea, well, let's go back to what we did and what we did well. Let's go fishing. Let's take our minds off this. Now, I love this because 
Peter just thought, well, this is the best thing to do. And the others followed him. But in actual fact, uh, he didn't stop. He didn't say, Lord, is this what you want me to do? He just thought, well, it's what we, what we know. Let's do what we know. We don't need to wait for some uh, preacher to come along or, or some uh, evangelist to come through the town. We're just going to go catch some fish. And so they get on the boat and they go out and all night, all night, they're out there. You know, and er early hours of the morning, it would be probably quite chilly, but they caught absolutely zero fish. Now, that can happen sometimes when you're fishing. You can spend hours and not even get a bite. But when you get the bite, there's an adrenaline rush comes and you know you want to reel and land that fish and get your little hand net ready to pull it in and get it into shore. But here we've got the story of Simon Peter, the guys out fished all night and they seen nothing. They caught nothing. And then Jesus turns up on the shore. He's on the beach standing watching them as they're out there. And he said, hey. And so the, he tells them, well, you haven't caught anything all night. Now, listen to me. Do what I'm saying. Because if you go with what I'm saying, and this is key for this season, if you go with what the Lord is speaking over you, and what he's giving you in directions, well, then the story goes that as they cast the net on the other side of the boat, on the right-hand side, so they've got it right, because they listened. And it wasn't about, well, let's just go do this because we're not really, we're just thinking of something good to do. And we know we can do this good, but a good idea not backed up by the Lord can leave you in this, in this, this scenario, coming back to the shore empty handed. But when you listen to the father's voice and when you go with what his direction is, you can end up bringing in a massive haul of fish that will actually, you know, well, it's, 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 <laughs> you guys had to call for help to get these 153 large fish caught and brought to shore. Now, I love this story because Jesus is already on the shore. He's inviting them, but he is already, because they these guys have been out all night. They're tired. They're drained of their energy, and especially more so now after the adrenaline rush of bringing in the large haul of fish. So he's already on the shore thought ahead of them, and he said, now it's time to bring these guys in and give them something to eat. So he's already prepared bread, and he has fish on the broil, cooking away, and he said to them, come and bring me some of your fish now. He didn't need their fish. He already had fish provided. But I think in this story, if you look at it, Jesus was reiterating to his disciples that, hey, guys, you know, it's not about going back to the old ways. It's not about what you know and how well you can do it. It's about being in the right place at the right time because I have guided you and I have led you to be in that place for that season, for that thing that's about to happen. And so they ca capture this catch of fish that's, you know, in fishermen's terms, that would have been worth a lot of money to those guys uh, and the, the business of selling it on to the marketeers. So there was provision made, but the, in the provision, Jesus was making the point, guys, that's not what I called you to anymore. I called you to step out and to come and fish for men, to go for the bigger catch, to go after the hearts and souls of men and to call them into relationship with me. And so he is just making a point in a loving way over a bit of breakfast. Jesus is just a, a affirming them and assuring them, come on, guys, stick with this. Don't go back to the old ways because there is something that's coming, something greater than what you know of right now, and it's going to overwhelm you and overtake you. Now, that's the reason why I want to talk about acceleration, because I see that in the next season, there's an acceleration of what the Lord has planned to put in place coming to the body of Christ. I believe that in this season that we're in now, we're going to see an acceleration. Now, I remember being back at, at Lakeland in 2008 at the revival there and hearing a prophetic word given by James Gall or Jim Gall, some people know him as, but James uh, stood on the platform and he, he 
give a little bit of a dialogue about what was what was uh, he had been involved in and even his time in the UK. And he had called uh, people from the United Kingdom, Ireland and England, Wales to come out and stand at the front of the platform in the 10,000 seater auditorium. And so I was there, I was out, and I said, right, what's going on here? Then he, after he'd done a little bit of introduction, he stands there and he literally takes the, the lectern by the either side and he goes, and he waits. And there's still a video available of it today. And he waits and he looks straight into the camera and God TV are there uh, covering the whole of the revival meetings. And all of a sudden, bang the lights go out inside the marquee. Everything went into darkness. God TV's generators kick into the backup system, and there's a little bit of flickering and light coming from the side screens. But everybody was in, in darkness, and you could see people bringing their phones out and putting on their little lights. And it was, it was a, a powerful time. But at the start, it was a little bit confusing because nobody knew uh, what was going on Security were running onto the platform and trying to get James off. And he said, no, 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 leave me, leave me. And so he, he turns to the camera and, you know, because of the backup, his microphone's still working. And he said, now, to the word of the Lord, I have it written down in my notes that either the lights would go out or the fire alarm would sound. Here's to the word of the Lord. And so he goes on and, and not to any, all the details of it, but basically his, his gist of the prophetic word was that there was 90 days that was coming to the United Kingdom where the United Kingdom would go on fire, would go ablaze for 90 days. And it would be greater than the Wesleyan fires of revival. So I'm believing that this, we haven't seen it, not yet. But I'm believing we are so, so much closer than what we were in 2008. And when the Lord speaks, he speaks with intention. And so he is giving you a dream of his to make you aware that some shift is about to happen. You know, so it's not about going out and toiling all night, catching nothing, but it's about listening to him and waiting on the father's instruction and then watch what significantly happens before your eyes comes into your hands and you get involved in actually gathering. So I'm believing that that we are closer now to this season of revival within the United Kingdom that is going to cause a story to unfold that is of the Lord, of his ministry, of his power encounters, of his signs, wonders, and miracles that is going to shake, rock, and over, overcome lives that even some of the hardest men in the United Kingdom are going to be saying, God, I surrender. I give up. Here's my heart. Take me. Come and be my Lord. Be my Savior. So there is harvest is what I'm saying to you that's coming. Now, there's harvest coming in the amounts, like the 153, where the disciples thought, well, how are we going to get all of this back to shore? And so the Lord came to the shore as an affirmment to them. Guys, don't worry about the amount. It'll happen. Just, just you come and bring them in and then come some, have some breakfast. So you can see in the midst of a story where, uh, where a great event happens, and there's an overwhelming amount of people that are coming into the kingdom, that in the midst of that, God says, don't worry, don't get anxious. He is there, he's in the midst of it, and he's probably sitting off to the side saying, hey guys, I've got breakfast cooking here. When you're finally finished wrapping this part up, come over and let's eat together, and let's spend some time together. That is his heart for us as, as his church that we spend time with him, we eat with him, and we talk with him, and, but the rest is coming. So by that, I'm saying the rest is coming. It's, we are entering into a season, an acceleration. Uh, that, that The word acceleration actually means uh, it's a rate of, of which velocity changes with time in terms of both speed and direction. So what am I saying by that? My sense from the Lord is, that we are on the cusp of this wave of some call it, that we are, are, are on the edge of something that's going to overtake us, overwhelm us, but it will come with such an excitement 
and a fervor because the Lord has a harvest. He has a net ready to catch people. And I think sometimes we're, we're not ready for it. Now, this morning, when you're out fishing and you've caught something and you decide that, well, I'm going to gut this, uh, take the head off and the tails and the fins and, and, and just strip the fish so you're taking back just the fleshy part that you want to cook. So you get rid of the other part. Now, what happens in most cases, especially if you've ever been out at sea when you're on a, a boat with like 10 or 12 other guys on a day's fishing trip, and you do that before heading back to shore, well, you talk about a, a noise because the seagulls have been watching and the seagulls uh, are, will come and they will make the noise that seagulls make. They'll be over the top flying down and they'll be dive bombing and collecting all of the excess bits that you don't want to take home to cook. Now, what I'm, why I'm saying this is because watch for the noise of the seagulls. The increase of the noise is a sign that fish have been caught, that fish are coming to shore. And I think there's a sign coming that we will hear that we'll recognize, hey, the father's on the move. He is here and he is about to do something extraordinary. I mean, Andrew last week was speaking about the revival that took place in the Heb Hebrides uh, around the 1950s, and some of the stories that he shared there about what happened. I mean, when we go back further than that to the 1905-1906, the revival in Azusa Street, when God moved, and there was such a mighty power and a presence for healing. You know, when God moves and, and people and men are drawn to it, in the 1859 revival, there were the stories go that people walking down the main street uh, in, in cold rain, with the Spirit of the Lord would just come along and would just sweep across the high street. And people were just seen dropping, falling flat on their face. And people were crying out saying, how do I get saved? Pastors would be knocked out of their houses and their beds at two, three, four, five in the morning. Pastor, lead me to Jesus. I need this Jesus, and I need him now. Conviction comes. Now, these are the things I'm talking about. I'm sensing in this next season that it's not just going to be the normal, but it's going to be the, uh, the hyper-normal, that, if that's a way you could even say it. But it's, it's like the Lord is saying to us and said, get ready. Get ready because, uh, well, just for example, what happens if this word comes to pass that the United Kingdom goes uh, on fire with a great revival for 90 days, three months. What will we do with the three months of revival when our churches get flooded, our churches get inundated with people crying out under conviction, I need this Jesus. I have to have Jesus in my life. And so you're ending up with this whole process of, well, what do we do once they've come to the Lord? How do we nurture them? How do we disciple them? So you need to be aware of the process that's going to be required of us to handle this catch. When the sound of the seagulls gets louder, you know that the Lord's about to do something great. And in the UK, we're waiting on the signs. We live by the sea. And so we walk usually every day if we can, down by the sea to actually hear and see and just experience the, the beauty of the coastline here. But, you know, there's, I heard a couple of seagulls this morning whilst I was preparing for this, but I'm talking about flocks of seagulls. I'm talking about a noise that will take your attention and make you aware, well, what is going on here? Why is there so many seagulls squawking? Now, I'm not saying there's going to be an increase in the birth of seagulls. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying there is a noise that's coming that will actually produce something that will get your attention. And God is about to get our attention because his son hasn't fulfilled the fishing quota yet that he desires to have with him in glory. And so that means that people have been saying about the billion soul harvest that's, that's here. I believe we are in it right now, and there is an increase, uh, I believe, that shifted in 2018 onwards, and we've seen an increase in salvations coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ. 
but I'm talking about something significant that we haven't seen yet here in the UK. We have heard the books, uh, the, the stories about it from years back, but in this time, in this season, we are not seeing it yet, but it's here and it's coming and it's going to accelerate. The Lord has a plan and a purpose, and he is not going to back down. So there's a lot of people in the UK that are going to be surprised when the spirit and the glory of the Lord falls in their communities, falls in their towns, and falls upon them, even in their nighttime sleep, getting wakened up, stirred up, because God is speaking to them. God is drawing and wooing the hearts of men and women and children, saying, this is the season that you will now come to know me. And I am creating the atmosphere that will cause that to come about, because when my spirit moves upon man, well, it's with an intentional purpose. And so there is men and women here in the UK that are going to be swept into the kingdom of God, and they're going to be like <laughs> they're going to be like standing in the line outside a church building, saying, "I don't know even know why I'm here, but I've got this real sense on me that I need to find this God. I need to find this Jesus." And that's not natural. And that's what I'm talking about. This outpouring of the glory of our God is not natural in human terms. But when he decides to draw all men onto him, wow, it is a supernatural occasion. It is God-inspired and God-driven, and it is just comes, and it it happens, and you're in it, and you're on it, and you're around it, and God's doing it all around you. And it's not like that we have to be involved. We just need to be available. And so the Lord is saying, get ready, church, because I am about to take you into a season of harvesting, of net catching, of fishing for the men's hearts and women's hearts and children's hearts that's going to hit turn this nation up down, and you know this nation needs a turnaround. But yet, I'm talking about something that is glorious. I'm talking about something that is going to excite you, that's going to get your heart pumping every time you waken up in the morning, you want to get out of bed because there's something good about to happen in that day, and you do not want to miss it miss it. Because when the glory comes, when the power comes, and when God moves in super, supernatural manifestations, my goodness, it's exciting. My goodness, it's great. And there's there's something in you that gets awakened to the fact that your God is on the move. Do you hear that? Your God is on the move. He's not forgot about us. He's not passed us by. And he's not like the disciples where they're out in the boat you in the nighttime, and Jesus was walking past. No, the UK is not being walked past. The UK is in the process of the waters being stirred, the birds are going to get noisy, and the harvest is coming. Now, if that doesn't excite your heart today, that is the good news that Jesus moves, the gospel is given out, and people come and accept him as Savior, as Lord, because they need a Savior. They need his love. They need him in their life. And all they do is say, yes, Jesus, I accept what you did for me. And I say yes to you today. And I give my life over to you, Lord Jesus, for this next season. So I'm talking about harvest revival time. I'm talking about a season that we haven't seen, that we haven't had books written about, or even movies made about. Because, well, this good one's coming out at the end of the month about the, the stories of what happened back in the Jesus movement back in the late 60s, early 70s, where a lot of the hippie community came and, and just wanted the Lord and came in their thousands uh, and filled churches. So I'm talking about something similar to that, but something greater, because God doesn't just do the same as what he did 40 odd years ago. No, he comes with the fresh. He comes with a new design and a new plan. And he has a way of attracting, a way of calling the hearts of men and women that we don't even know about. And when he moves, we move. 
When we hear his voice, we go with what he is saying. Like Peter and the disciples. Well, guys, you've tried it your way. Now listen, I'm speaking now. Cast your nets on the right-hand side and wait and see what happens. <laughs> Isn't that exciting? I mean, you imagine Jesus walking up to you right now. I'm saying, come on, uh, Andy, I'm taking you down to the, the key here. We're going to, to, to meet someone down here. And uh, they're, they're, just going to, they're just going to like get hit by the power of me, says the Lord. And it's going to radically impact their life. And they're radically going to get saved. And they, they're going to go on fire because something shifted, something changed in their life that has brought so much excitement, so much joy, and so much sense of the burden that they've been carrying, lifted off them, that they're just ecstatic with this new relationship that they've just found and just said yes to Jesus. And they want to tell others because why? Because it's the good news of the gospel. You cannot hold back. When you've got good news, you want others to know about it. You want to tell them. You don't want to hold it. You don't want to hide it. You don't want to bury it. You want to get it out there because it is the fire of God that comes upon you, that excites you and generates you and actually leads you into that whole arena of the salvation flow where the river of God flows and everybody's caught in it. It's like a tsunami of God's power coming, hitting the UK, and everybody hears about it, everybody knows about it, and there's going to be thousands upon thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, coming into the relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the good news, folks. All that the Lord, I feel, is saying today is, are you ready? If not, get ready, because there is a shift coming, and I'm warning you about it, and it's going to happen. And God is on the move like he has never been before. And things are stirring up and the natural signs are happening that is actually uh, making us look at what the Bible says about what happens before the return of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not worried about the wars and rumors of wars, but I am saying that the greatest thing in this, the end time story, is the fact that he is going to call people onto himself. He's going to get raised up to such an extent that men, women, and children will come running to the cross, running and to find salvation. And when they get it, well, it's going to ripple, 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 because it will have a knock-on effect. And their family members are going to see the transformation in these people's lives. And they're going to say, I want this Jesus that you've just got. How do I get him? So there is a stirring and there is a happening that's happening right around us. I'm believing that this is a year of accelerated growth, acceleration and velocity coming upon the body of Christ worldwide, not just in the UK, uh, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm believing for the UK, but I'm saying, Lord, it's going to go all over the world. And if it starts in the UK, it will leave these shores and it will take the missionary gospel message to the other shores of the world, to other countries of the world, to into Europe, into America, into China. I mean, there will be no stopping the move of God when he, like, lifts it up and says, let it go. It's time. And so salvation is something that's on his heart. It always has been because he told us that he would, he would not wish anyone to perish. So the desire of the Lord is given this the rubber stamp saying, now, body of believers, are you ready? Have you got enough oil in your lamp to last you when this starts to roll out, that you will be able to actually handle it, run with it? But most of all, that your spirit is filled up with the oil of the glory of the Lord so that when he's moving, you are sensitive to him, that you are ready to step out and to go with him wherever he says. If he says to you tomorrow morning when you're waking up, hey, uh, John or Terry or Martha or Mary, I need you guys to go to uh, Uzbekistan and you're going to meet a, 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 a town official in the town of such and such. And are, are you going to be ready to say, okay, God, if this is what you're saying, I'm going to go. Are you going to step out of the boat and go with what the glory is calling, what Jesus is calling you into? Or are you going to just settle for the natural? Are you going to settle for the norm and just stay at home and be just Mr. Nice? And I'll go to church, Lord. I'll, I'll pray, Lord. And I'll, 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 I'll say a little word when I, when I get the chance. 
But no, do you not want the excitement of running after what God is already doing around you, stepping into the glory, hearing what he is leading, hearing the voice of God say, go here, do this. You're going to meet this person. I'm excited because I'm sensing that God is in the process now of stepping it up, of saying to his bride, his people, his individuals are going to hear the voice of God bringing direction as clarity and clarified, and it's going to be good because God is going to start <laughs> oozing out of us uh, because he's going to stir our hearts with excitement for what is coming. And so we're going to be the ones that will be writing books. We're going to be the ones that are going to be making the movie clips and getting it out on Facebook, getting it out around the world. Hey, I've just met this person. This just happened to them as I prayed for them. Now, here, tell me your story. And you're, you're going to get their story recorded and get it out there. And the glory will come on the stories, will come on the video clips, and it will impact those that pick it up in TikTok or YouTube or wherever the, the media gets it. We have been gifted with a media platform today that will allow us to shed the good news of the gospel quickly and all around the world. Many will be impacted by it because they will get excited about the stories that they're watching and seeing, and it will transform their life and give them a desire to connect with this Jesus that we know. So I'm excited about today. I'm excited about this year, 2023. Wow. Come on. The Lord is my shepherd, Psalm 23. He leads me. So that's what I'm saying to you. Peter didn't wait for the leading of Jesus, although he got it. Jesus was gracious and came alongside and said, hey, guys, I'm on the beach. Now cast your nets to the other side. I want to be the person, and I know you do, that wants to be the person that hears Jesus, hears the voice of God, and hears the leading and the direction given to us for this year, for this year, for this year of 23. And it accelerates as we move through it. And so if you're not excited, I hope this message excites you. It gets you filled with faith. But all I'm saying to you is Jesus is calling you to awaken, to get out of your slumber, to get excited again about your God, to find the joy of your salvation again like you had when you first came into the, uh, the relationship with Jesus Christ and you felt that impact that many are about to feel over this nation. <laughs> we need to find that, guys. We need to be the ones that are out there with eyes open, antenna tuned into the Holy Spirit and saying, okay, God, this is another new day. What are we doing today? Where are we going? What's going to be happening? Uh, God, I don't want this day to go quick. I want to get as much in and I want to get as much out of this day as you can give me. And so that changes your whole persona and changes your whole outlook on life. And you become the one that is so focused on Jesus that everything else pales into insignificance. <laughs> you know, when you walk into your workplace and you know that something's shifted in you, well, you're watching and you're waiting for when Holy Spirit leads you. And the guy that walks in to the office this, this next morning and, and he's like walking along, can hardly move. And you just walk up and say, hey, Bert, what happened to you? Oh, it's my back, my back. That guy's had to come to work because he needs to earn money. He can't afford to take time off work. And the Spirit of the Lord quickens you, offer to pray for him. Say, Bert, sit down in the chair. Let me check your leg length and let me, let me measure your legs. Let's see what God wants to do for you because he loves you. And so you watch his legs and you pray for him and you command his legs to grow out to the same size and his back gets healed. Bert's transformed. He has felt the power of God on him. He knows that something has shifted, and he knows that his pain is gone. Would he want this Jesus? Yes, he will. And so you get an opportunity to invite him to step into a relationship with Jesus Christ. He gets transformed. He goes home, tells his wife and family and kids, look, this happened to me today. You know how bad I was when I left this morning to go to work. Look, look at me. Look what's happened. And I found Jesus. And so the transformation happens. And the Bible says that, that families will come into the kingdom. Uh, that just doesn't stop with the individuals. When the power of Jesus moves, when his glory falls, when he decides it's a time of a flood of his presence to hit a nation, 
well then watch out because things will shift things will happen and the glory will bring in the kingdom of the lord the glory will bring in the catch of the the mighty catch that the lord is after for this next season who does he look to he looks to you and he looks to me and he says get yourself ready get yourself ready be prepared have your oil on your fingertips have it on your head <laughs> in psalm 23 and verse 5 it says about the, the anointing oil that comes that the shepherds would put on the the sheep's head to protect them he anoints your head with oil why because he's about to overflow your cup it says that your cup will overflow so that speaks to me of volume that speaks to me of an acceleration of what we already have to an increase of the significant and the life-changing uh, anointing that comes upon us when the Lord God moves and moves in significant ways. Watch out, UK. You're about to see the hand of God, the finger of God, touching this nation with the power of God that signs, wonders, and miracles will be talked about all over this nation. Come on. So, Father, I want to bless you guys this morning. I want to bless you as we close here this morning with the power and the anointing and the increase of the Holy Spirit upon your life right now. Even as you're watching and you watch later, we bless you for being part of it this morning. But we bless those that watch later. And we say, in the name of Jesus Christ, we anoint you in preparation for what is coming. So you get excited with your God. There's an increase of excitement and joy and a return to the Father that you once knew so well. And he is stirring up right now. Even the Spirit of God is creating new life and new rivers to bubble up from deep within you that your heart gets reignited again with passion for Jesus and that you get stirred up so that you get ready, that you are ready and watching and waiting for this event when the Lord is coming and moving in such significant numbers that it is going to astound you, but you're going to be in it. You're going to be part of the river of God that flows down streets and challenges men and women's decisions in life and calls them into relationship with him. You're going to see it. You're going to be part of it. And I bless you with that in Jesus' name today, with the get ready spirit of God, that the word of God, it stirs up in your heart, stirs up in your spirit. And all you want to do is say, come on, God, let's do this. And so I just bless you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to step into the river of God that's flowing and is coming and will sweep over the UK. And uh, we call in the 90 days ablaze over the UK in Jesus' name. We call it in, Lord. We have been waiting for it. We have been stirred up for it. We have been hanging in there, Lord, saying, when, when, when? So, Lord, let it be now. Let it be in this year that we see the increase and the move of God in this nation like never before written about. And so we bless bless the government of the UK. We bless all those in authority over the UK, and we bless the hand of God, the finger of God that's coming to touch the United Kingdom in Jesus' name. Let the unity of the body be what brings us all together in Jesus' name. Be blessed today, and thank you for being with us this morning. Take this message. It's going to be on YouTube later on. And so take it, take the link, share it. If you haven't subscribed yet to our YouTube channel, then go to Freedom Fire Ministries, look for it on YouTube. You'll find us there. We're not hard to, uh, to miss, but uh, sign up and subscribe. And let's get the word of the Lord out, the message of the Lord that he is coming. Revival is going to sweep the nation of the UK. You're going to be astounded. I'm going to be astounded. But God is on the move. Bless you guys. Have an amazing day. And may you have dreams that speak to you in the middle of the night from the Father that stir you to greater works. Amen. Be blessed in Jesus' name. <laughs>